Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna be taking our first look at Lumina Neo, and this video is sponsored by Skylum, the creators of Lumina Neo. I'm really excited to dive into and share with you the new tools that we have to work with, and I have heaps and heaps of photo examples to show you how these tools work in a few different scenarios and show you how you can best use these tools so you can see if this is right for your workflow and your style of photo editing. So this is my Lumina Neo catalog, and just like Lumina AI, you can import single photos or you can import a folder of photos. And let me tell you, it was really weird going through and finding all my worst images with power lines going through it and dust spots on it so I can show you these removal tools. But the first thing we're going to start off with is editing some nice photos to show you how the Relight AI tool works. The Relight AI tool is going to be so handy if you like to shoot backlit photos or you like to take photos where you expose for the sky and you still have have a subject in your frame that's underexposed. So this is the first image that we're going to be working on. It's an easy portrait to start off with. Dan took this of me when we were in Scotland. So for this photo, you can use the Enhance AI and Accent AI slider to balance out the tones of the image. But what I like about the Relight AI tool is that you have more control over what parts of the image are brighter and darker. So if I bring up the Brightness Knee slider all the way up to 100, it's going to look a bit ridiculous, but you can see that it's brightening up only me, the subject in the frame, and the background remains exactly the same as the original photo. And I think it's done a really good job at cutting me out of the background as well. If even with my curly hair, it's done a really nice job. So for this, I don't want to have it up that high. I just want to bring the brightness knee slider up a little bit. And I'm also going to bring the brightness fast slider up just a slight amount as well, because I do still want the background to be quite dark, but I still want to see a little bit of details in the background. So as you can see, the background of this photo is very warm because of the yellow flowers and then the foreground. So the subject is quite cool because of the blue jumper that I'm wearing. It's reflecting that blue light back into my face and my hair. So something we can do to fix that is heading to advanced settings and we can actually change the warmth of the foreground and the background of the image with these two sliders. So for this photo, I want to bring the warmth near slider up to add some warmth back into myself so I look like I fit into the image a little bit better. To finish off editing this photo, I'm gonna head to develop and down to optics manual corrections and bring up the D vignette slider because the edges of this photo are quite dark. And I'm also going to go into curves and select my green channel and bring the black point down just to add some extra warmth to the overall photo. And finally, I'm gonna head down to our mood tab here and and apply my New York LUT because I want to give my photo an overall kind of vintage look and a wash of color as well. And I'm just going to bring the amount up a little bit higher. Okay, so this is the original and this is the after. This is the next photo we have. And as you can see, this is more of a backlit photo and a photo where I'm exposing for the background because I want to see these beautiful sunset colors and the beautiful clouds in the shot. So I'm going to go here and start by bringing up the brightness news slider to bring that light back into the foreground of the photo. And for this image, because it's a further away shot, I'm gonna be making use of the depth slider. So just to show you exactly how it works, I am gonna bring the brightness near to 100 and I'm gonna move the slider up and down. And as you can see, we have a kind of linear gradient in the photo that goes up and down depending on where the slider is. So for a photo like this, where you've got your subject kind of halfway in the frame, I think it looks really natural if you bring the depth slider just around here, where it kind of blends out in a section of photo where there's already a lot of detail. So you could also bring it up higher where it blends out with this horizon line as well. But I do want some of the water to be a bit darker. And then because I want to bring out as much detail as possible in the sky, I'm also going to bring the brightness bar slider down slightly. And as you can see, it's going to darken up the top half of our photo. I still think we can bring out a little more detail in the sky. So in combination with Relight AI, we're going to go into Enhance AI and bring up the Sky Enhancer AI slider which is again going to bring out some nice detail in that sunset. To finish off this photo, I'm gonna head into toning just to show you a couple of different ways that you can color your photos. And I'm gonna start with the shadows and bring the saturation up quite high to select a color. For this photo, I was thinking a 
purpley blue color will look very moody. So I'm gonna select that, then bring down the saturation to blend it into the image. And then for the highlights, I'm going to pick a very warm color. So I'm gonna go for this orange yellow color here. And then again, bring down the saturation to help it blend in. So here's a final before and after before and after. The final image we have to balance out the tones for is this one, which I think is going to be quite a difficult image. It's very humid and balmy in Thailand, so my hair is quite frizzy. So the first thing I wanna do is bring up the overall exposure of this photo a little bit. So heading down to Relight AI, we're gonna bring the brightness knee slider up to add light back into the portrait. And you can see as I'm doing that, we do have a little bit of a harsh outline around that frizzy part of my hair like I assumed. So something we can do here, there's two ways we can help blend this into the photo. The first one is using our depth slider, which I think I would use anyway because I think this part of the photo here is a little too dark for my liking. So I'm gonna bring the depth slider up to bring that gradient we were looking at before up higher in the image. That's already starting to blend out really nicely. The next thing you can do is select this tool here to add a mask to the photo. So I'm gonna select the erase button and I'm gonna make the brush a bit bigger. I'm gonna keep the softness at 100, but the strength I'm gonna bring down pretty low. And then I will just brush over this little section of hair here and that's just helped to blend into the photo. And I'm also going to bring the brightness far slider down again to darken that sky so we can get as much detail out of it as possible. And let's also add some warmth to the foreground. Nice. So here's a before and after of the Relight AI tool, before and after. Next up is another feature that I'm super, super excited for, which is the automatic removal of power lines in your photos. And this is something that I really, really want for my travel photos. And I'm very excited to see how it works here. Again, I've got three different photos, no, four photos at differing difficulty levels that we can test out to see how it works. By the way, if you wanted to try out Lumina Neo for yourself, you can use the link in my description to pre-order it for a little discount. This is the first photo that we'll be editing and I would say this is difficulty easy because the power lines are against a solid color. So you can find this tool under erase and object removals and remove power lines and I'm gonna click that. I'm not gonna edit the video so you can see just how long it takes. I took this photo again in Thailand and when I took it, I remember thinking like, oh, I wish those power lines went there because it would look so much cleaner. Okay, so it's done it and wow, I think it did a really good job at getting rid of these power lines here, especially around the leaves. These ones here, you can see a little bit of ghosting, so I'm just gonna very roughly go over it with my eraser tool here, here and here. I'm assuming because they were quite thick, maybe that's why it ended up like that. And here is a before and after. The next photo we have, I would say is difficulty medium because the power lines are still against a slightly solid colored background, but there are a lot of them. So let's go to erase and remove power lines. Speaking of tops, as you can see in that picture, this is my new favorite top. Watch me wear it for like the next 10 videos in a row. <laughs> Okay, I'm not editing again, so you can just see it happening in real time. There we go, it's gotten rid of the power lines. Okay, it did such a good job getting rid of these big ones here. And it's interesting how it's gotten rid of the ones on the building here as well. So I kind of like, you know, having some power lines in the photos because it is part of like the location that I was in. So if the tools do remove something that you did want in your photo, you can use the erase tool. So I'm gonna select all these power lines here. So I want them back in my image and I'm gonna select restore and that's just gonna bring them back. And you can see here is a little bit of texture too. I'm gonna bring these back as well. And then on the other hand, it also missed a little bit of power line there. So I'm gonna select and erase that. And I feel like this light pole kind of sticking out here looks a bit weird. So I'm gonna go over it with my brush and erase that as well. But yeah, I think that looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Last but not least, we have an image which I would classify as difficulty level hard because the power lines are going across a lot of texture and details and different colors here. So let's remove it and see what it does. Also, these are not actually power lines. They are cable car lines. So in real life, I would hope they wouldn't disappear. But for the sake of this photo and the illusion of a clean image, we're going to get rid of them. Cool. Okay. That did a really good job. And now our cable car is just like floating there in midair. Let's just get rid of it. I'm committing to not having any cable cars in my photo. 
erase. And I'm also going to get rid of these little lines that it missed here. And I like that it did get rid of one of these poles. I'm gonna get rid of this one. Again, I'm just painting super messy across just with my mouse and hitting erase. Nice. And then just here, I feel like I'm gonna bring back those two little uh, circle things. <laughs> just select restore. Okay, there we go. So here's the before and here's the after. That's really impressive. I'm really, really happy with what that looks like. I really like this power line removal tool. So I have one more bonus image. This again is difficulty hard because we have so much texture and colors and stuff going on. So I'm gonna go to erase, remove power lines and see what it does. Again, these are cable cars, but they look like power lines. And <laughs> so I thought it would be a good example. Ah, it's so good. I don't even need to do anything to fix this one. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Would you use a tool like this? For me, I would definitely use it for my travel photos as I've, I've been showing you. <laughs> so next up, I've been doing a little bit more moon photography recently, and this is uh, just like a snap that I took the other day. I'm gonna brighten it up with my curves tool. And as you can see, because I was shooting at F, I don't know, probably 6.3 or something, you can see quite a lot of lens spots on this. So just like the power line erase tool, I think this is going to be another feature that's going to be super useful and it's going to save a lot of time as well, which is the remove dust spots tool. So I'm gonna click that, not cut anything, keep talking so you can see how it works in real time. And there we go, it's gotten rid of all the dust spots. I'll show you some before and afters. Even this one here, it's like a little smudge here in the corner, it's gotten rid of that too. Okay, here we have another photo that I wanna try it on. So remove dust spots. Just like when we use the remove power lines tool, if this tool gets rid of something you didn't want it to get rid of, you can, so for example, you're like, no, I want this lens spot in my photo. So you can select it like that and press restore and it will bring it back. Otherwise, if it didn't get rid of something you wanted to get rid of, you can just tap on it, brush over it and select erase. Okay, so in this image here, I would say this is the hardest one that I have for lens spots to be removed. We've got some up here in the clouds and we also have a couple just here in the trees where there is a lot of texture. So we'll see how, like what it does. Okay, it did a great job at removing the dust spots in the clouds and it did remove a couple that were here in the trees. I did notice it just missed out on these two. So I'll just erase that manually. And done, here's a before and here's an after. So that is all I have for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed seeing all those examples of how the tools work on different photos. If you have any questions or anything else you wanna see in more depth and detail, let me know down in the comments below. And if you wanna try out Lumina Neo for yourself, you can use the link in my description to pre-order it and get a little discount as well. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.